Ever wondered why the winning bots at line follower competition tracks the line so smoothly while our bots get stuck in the simplest of the turns? Well, that is because they use an algorithm known as PID or proportional integral and derivative control algorithm for the robots which is optimized for this purpose of line tracking. So in this video we're going to talk about the very basics of line tracking and if you are someone who is stuck with all those kind of cockroach robots with only two or three sensors and wants a very good and beefy upgrade you have come to the right place. So stay tuned for that and let's get started. So as you are aware of, a robot consists of three to four basic blocks which constitutes the entire system of a robot. First off is the control unit, which in our case can be a microcontroller. We will be using Arduino Nano for this purpose, which will be receiving the inputs from the sensors and will be giving the output to the motor driver so that it can drive the actuators, which in our case is the motors. So we have the microcontroller. Next, we have the motor driver, which will be used to drive the actuators that in our case is the motors. We have the motors, of course. And along with that, to sense the line, we will have an eight area IR sensor. And in order to make this video extremely simple and beginner friendly, I will be using an IR sensor array from Pololu, which you can purchase online. And it comes already soldered in a very tiny SMD package. And for motors, I'll be using N20 geared motors. For driving the motors as a motor driver, I'll be using the MX150 motor driver, which is a very, very affordable motor driver. And it comes with a lot of limitations, such as it is not breadboard friendly. It cannot handle a lot of current, which we do not need in our specific application because we'll be driving the N20 motors with that. And for powering the entire system, I'll be using some standard three cell LiPo batteries. So let's get started with the assembly. <music> understand what is PID from a very beginner point of view. Now the term PID consists of three portions, the P and the I and the D. The P stands for proportional, the I stands for integral and the D stands for derivative. In our particular application, we do not need the integral term as much, but we will be using the P and the D terms to control our robot. So let us understand them in detail. Now what does this P term signify? We have something called as the goal or the destination in this particular algorithm. Now, what is the goal? Now, the goal is something that we want to achieve in our program. In our case, the goal should be, the line should be at the center of the eight area IR sensors. Now, what is that? The line should be within the sensor number three to the sensor number four, if we consider zero as the first sensor and seven as the eighth sensor, because those two sensors are the middle of the entire array. Now, that is what our goal is. Now, we have something called as the error. Now, what is the error? The error is, what the current position of the line is as compared to the goal. Now say for example, if the line is under the sensor zero and one, but we want it to be at the goal, that is sensor number three and four, then the difference between the two gives us the error value. Now what we need to do is that develop a certain way of mapping this particular error value to the movement of the motors, such that the motors movement increases or decreases in a particular manner as the error increases and decreases. Now, how do we do that? We do that by using the PID algorithm. We simply multiply the KP variable to the error value and then we map that particular value to the speed of the motors by adding and subtracting that value to the PWM signal supplied to the motor driver. And that is how the speed of the motor gets increased or decreased to respond in a specific manner to reach the goal and eliminate the error completely. Now, reality is far from theory. Because when the robot approaches its goal at a constant speed and reaches its goal, it still cannot stop itself from correcting the error because there exists something called as inertia. The movement of the robots keeps on till it has overcome the force of inertia and then it again tries to realign itself with the line, resulting in a wobbly movement of the robot. Now this is where the D term comes into play. What the D term actually does is it reduces the speed of the correction of the robot as it approaches its goal. What do I mean by that? The closer the robot is to its goal, the slower its correction speed becomes so that this wobbly nature of the robot can be avoided as much as possible. Now, how do we map this particular D to the speed of the motors? Well, 
we add the d term to our formula and multiply the k d term with the difference of the last error as compared to the present error. Now the formula should look somewhat like this ki multiplied by error plus kd multiplied by error minus last error because we need that particular difference in error in order to understand how far the robot is from its particular goal and then respond accordingly. Now in order to make you understand how this particular thing works in an entire program I have created a very small and easy to understand program for you guys so let's have a look at it. Okay so this is the program that I have been talking about this is a very basic program to make you understand the basics of PID. We have the QTR sensors.h library included in our program and we have some basic parameters declared here that is the number of sensors, number of samples will be taking per sensor and the connected emitter pin which is connected to digital pin number 2 because these are the things that our QTR sensor library needs to get the sensor configured and ready to run. We also have this function called QTR sensor analog QTRA in order to define all the necessary input pins, the number of sensors, the number of samples per sensor and the emitter pin as well. We also have the KP and KD defined over here and just as I explained the starting point of KP can be anywhere that gives you the maximum motor speed in our case 220 divided by the maximum error that is 3500. So that gives us 0.062. We are setting the KD to 0 for now. And of course, we do have a void setup over here, which calibrates the line sensor using the calibrate line sensor function, which is basically a very basic function to check between the lightest and the darkest areas of the track. Now coming to the void loop section, we do have a position variable, which gives us the position of the line in relation to the robot as perceived by the eight sensor array. After that, we have the error calculated, which is nothing but the goal minus position of the current line. And as I've already explained, the adjustment of the motors will be KP multiplied by the error plus KD multiplied by the error minus the last error. And the last error is initialized with the value of the error as of now, because after this loop iterates again, the error value will be replaced and the last error should remain the value of the previous error. After that, we just simply analog write, that is we supply a PWM signal to the motor driver in our case, MX1508, a pretty standard motor driver to control our N20 gear motors. And then we just use this constraint function to keep our adjustment value within the limits of zero and max speed. And that is pretty much it. This is how simple the program is. And now let us see this program in action. One of the major challenges I faced for making this PID robot myself was to correctly tune the values of KP and KD. Now I'm gonna help you with that as well. First of all, we need to understand that the starting point of KP can be anywhere such that the movement of the motors is completely stopped when the error is maximum. What do I mean by that? Say our maximum error is 3500 in our particular case because our QTL library gives us a maximum error of 3500 when the line is at the edge or out of any of the extreme sensors. So if we have an error of 3500, one of the motors should completely stop. So how do we get our p-value from that? We simply divide the max speed of our motor, which in our case is 220, with the maximum amount of error that we can generate. That is 3500. So 220 divided by 3500 gives us a starting KP value of 0.62. And we can get started with that and then we can fine tune it accordingly. Once we reach a satisfactory level of KP value, we can then go ahead and then slowly increase the KD value to our satisfaction. But as far as I have observed, the KD value is somewhere around two to three times the value of KP. Now that our code is completely set up and ready, it's time to test our robot on an actual track. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, do drop a like, share this video amongst your friends and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Do leave them down in the comment section below. Goodbye.